That's the Phillies. <laughs> Welcome to Phillies Hats Joe Media and Jerry Cap and last night's game between the Philly Phillies and the New York Mets as the Phillies lose five to four to the Mets. Unacceptable. I have run out of words for this Phillies team. I have truly run out of words for this Phillies team. Now guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn on the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. This video is also brought to you by All Things Phillies, All Things Phillies provides a deal video of highlights for the game. So please go and subscribe to his channel. Link in the description section. This defense can continues to be abysmal, or this execution continues to be abysmal, there's no heart, these guards aren't even going out there and having fun playing the game, because you know why, because they are not putting themselves in a good situation to win, so we get swept up at the New York Mets, um, we just get totally outmatched, uh, and you know, we give them credit, right, I mean, they just continue to take advantage of our mistakes, and we have lost 10 of our last 14 games, and Joe Girardi certainly is on the hot seat, there is no question about it, I think it's going to be any day now. Uh, and even in knowledge I last night, I think he knows that he is on the hot seat. He knows uh, that his job is in jeopardy. Um, so there's simply no excuse. I mean, I have just it, such a bad taste in my mouth about this Philly team, like the rest of the city. I, I really, really do. I, I just have no words for this. Oh, so very Phillies. Uh, I, I, I've just never, ever seen anything like in my life. I, I just, I don't know what to say. Freaking Abel's not a closer. I'm sorry. Uh, I think we've seen enough of that after your last home run to Nick Plummer. Who? Who? Who in the world is Nick Plummer? I mean, my goodness gracious. I mean, there is just no excuse for what happened last night. I mean, clearly, clearly get a clutch rerun home run by Nick Castellanos and boy, it goes to waste. I do not blame this all on Joe Girardi. You know, Sir Andy Dominguez, who was great in the bottom of the eighth inning, he was fantastic. And you know, Corey Gannon has been a little bit shaky, especially against his Mets team. Well, I don't know what you not want Sir Andy to try to collect a two-out seat. Partly, maybe you can understand because, hey, you want to bring it closer in the ball game. All these reports from all these Phillies players' parents saying, why are they not having fun playing the game? Why are they not having fun playing the game? Um, you know, it's just like everybody sees it. Watch this team on a daily basis. You just see how they just don't go out there and have fun. You know, they're, they're just, they just don't. Uh, they look like they're just robots out there. Have fun. As we pick up the scoring summary here in the bottom of the first inning, Francisco Lindor grounds the ball to first. Reese Hoskins goes to second. The throw is offline. Uh, and the throw by Yon Camargo is totally to JT's right. Not even close. I mean, the throw, honestly, if it was a good throw, they probably would have got him. Terrible throw. Luis Guillerme uh, came around to score on that one. And the throw to second base, Reese Hoskins. Also, Yon Camargo was off the back. And yes, he was. He was originally, Storm he was originally called out. Uh, and uh, he pointed back to Buck Shorter. He's like, challenge that, challenge that. And Yohan Camargo was clearly out on second base. Um, so another defensive miscue. And also that throw by Yohan Camargo to home plate. Awful. Another bad execution by the Phillies. Uh, you could just add to it. Um, so, I mean, these are the kind of plays that cost you from winning ball games. One nothing New York. Let me pick it up here in the same inning. A lot of Escobar grounds out and a force out uh, as they were able to get uh, Pete Alonso out at second. Escobar was able to beat out the throw to first, but in the meantime, Star Marte came around to score, and it's now two nothing New York. So the Mets do a wonderful job of taking advantage of their opponents' mistakes, uh, and they they seem to really execute well. Unlike this team, am I right? I mean, my goodness gracious, when do you ever see the Phillies take advantage of, you know, their opponent's mistakes like this? Not very often. Not very often. We don't really see it too much, do we? We haven't won a series uh, in over two weeks. Uh, so that's 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 really uh, that's really hopeful, right? It really gets me excited uh, you know, to see this team play today, Memorial Day, 4-5 uh, against the Giants. So we pick it up here in the same inning. Mark Canna grounds out the third, uh, and uh, Francisco Lindor comes around to score, uh, and the Mets now lead it 3 to nothing. Lindor's speed pays off right there as our bum gig at the shore out at first and probably understand it. Then we pick it up here in the top of the third inning. We have a golden opportunity to get something done. This is a second time recently he's really folded with the base was loaded as album grounds into a double play Joe Barrera comes around to score and the Phillies gonna win now three to one ball game well he struck out last time and of course we would have much rather have a strikeout right there uh so awful 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 terrible execution once again terrible execution once again not playing fundamental baseball uh, so I do not care we got a run right there get up here in the top of the eighth inning Nick Castellanos 
Um, this was huge. Of course, it wasn't uh, didn't amount to much, uh, but he was on a deep drive to left field. A three-run shot also scores Camargo and Alec Baum, and the Phillies now retake the lead nine four to three ball game. So you're thinking like, let's go. I mean, Nick Castellanos a huge hit right there. I think he went about 76 at bats without collecting a home run. So that's that's quite a few at bats for sure. Uh, his sixth home run of the season, a three-run shot. Uh, so that was just huge. So nice deep drive to left field, right? I mean, you saw the video I posted. It was the video of when he had a home run in August of 2020 when he was a member of Cincinnati Reds, and I uh, overlapped it with last night's footage. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, so four to three, Philadelphia. You don't really see that much out of this Phillies team, right? I mean, a huge clutch hit like that. And of course, Corey can able to make sure that we would lose this ball game. But I mean, heck, I mean, Nick Castellanos certainly showing some heart right there. I mean, that was you know showing some heart. I mean, I will say that uh, Nick Castellanos right there. That was huge by far. The, you know the biggest hit he's had in Philly's uniform. Of course, it wasn't his fault we lost this ball game. Let me pick it up here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And bring in Corey Knable. Uh, you know we're feeling pretty good. I'm like, okay, hey, hey, let's bounce back. He's a 2890 array. Uh, you know he's gonna get the save here. First pitch in the inning. Home run as Nick Plummer homers on a fly ball to right field. Batting from the left hand side of the batter's box, his first career home run, and the Mets tied at four. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just can you get any more Phillies? Can you get any more Phillies? No, you cannot. I, I have never seen it in my life. A team that just gives away Lee. I mean, it's the same thing every single year. It, it's just, it just, I, I just never seen anything like it. A team that can never adjust this nagging issue that has been biting him in the backside for years and years. And he has to understand this offense certainly is looking sluggish. Kyle Schwarber, I'm really, really down on him. He is really, really starting to bother me. I mean, Nick Castillo, that was a huge hit last night. I mean, but this Phillies offense needs to really get it going, but. This bullpen still is not where it needs to be. It is not where it needs to be. And unfortunately, somebody's going to have to take the fall where it's his fault or not. And that is the manager, Joe Girardi. Yes, I do not blame this all on Joe Girardi. Right? This, the Phillies' problems extend far beyond Joe Girardi. But unfortunately, somebody's going to have to take the blame for it. Uh, someone's going to have to take the brunt uh, you know, of the team's struggles. And fortunately, that could be the manager. Pick it up here in the bottom of the death inning. Eduardo Escobar doubles on a sharp line side to right field. As, as he lands, Corey Canaveral going back there and out there in the 10th. Why? Why? I don't understand it. The Storm Marte comes around to score, and the Mets win it 5-4. I just... I don't understand that part of it. I do blame George Whitey. Why in the world would he have Corey Kinnaman go back out there for the 10th? I, I, I don't really understand that. Uh, you know, he clearly doesn't really have him. He'll have that home run to, a, you know, pretty much a no-namer. Nick Plummer, who was in Syracuse last week. Let's not forget that. Triple A, uh, Syracuse. Um, <laughs> it's just disgraceful. Uh, Kyle Schwarber uh, goes hitless out of the leadoff spot, but does manage to collect a walk. He was the victim of a really good play by Eduardo Escobar in foul territory, unfortunately. Average down drops to one eighty. One, he hasn't home run in like a minute, as I talked about before. LPS now drops below that 700 mark at 699. He is just terrible uh, so far this year. He really, really has been. And uh, Alec Plum out of the two holes. Hitless. He just managed to collect a walk, but he is really, really slumped. Jump drops to 274. LPS now drops below that 700 mark at 693. So another guy who has really, really fallen off. And another guy I'm very, very disappointed with, for sure, Bryce Harper. I hit his performance last night, but he manages to collect two walks. That's one thing about Harper, and he always is able to mix in a couple walks in there. You know, so Harper, you know, with a decent night last night. Uh, average now sits at uh, 312. OPS now sits at 962. Uh, you know, he's certainly still having an MVP season, for sure. I mean, the OPS wall above uh, 950. He just continues to put up elite numbers. Not worried about Harp one bit. I feel bad for Harp. And uh, Nick Castellanos, only one hit was a big one, the three-run shot to left field, that deep drive to left field, right, uh, to give the Phillies a four to three lead at that time, that was just huge, uh, I was watching that, I'm like, no way, no way, and one thing I will say about the announcers last night, I mean, the SMY.2 certainly seemed to be a little less biased last night, it was certainly a better job than before, I will give them that, it didn't seem as bad, um, you know, it certainly seemed to calm down a little bit, it was much more enjoyable watching last night's ball game than the last time, right, the last time was just awful, Gene Segura collects two knocks last night, that was nice to see hopefully he's going to start to get it going uh so uh you know he really did have a good month of may for, especially the first half of may that was definitely kinder to him than the second half of may uh as i talked about uh before and uh, reese hoskins another hit was performance i mean he's not the only guy i mean you go take a carl schwarber reese hoskins i mean these guys are just not 
getting it going. Not getting it going. It really is just so hard to watch this Phillies team. It's just the potential in them and look at the results. And someone told me before, potential means nothing. Literally, it means nothing. Uh, you you got to go out there and perform. JT Muto collects a knock last night behind the plate. Uh, and Adriel Pereira also collects a knock last night. Also scores one of the Phillies' four runs. Um, and uh, Johan Camargo collects two walks last night and goes hitless. But, I mean, that play uh, in the bottom first inning, that was just awful. And this is coming from the guy who's a very good defender. No, go for Bryson Stott out there. I'm not saying you got to put Bryson Stott out there. No, maybe you shouldn't have said that. Uh, keep Johan Camargo out there. Definitely a better option than Bryson Stott. But... That was pretty abysmal, and I do blame, you know, part of the Reese Hoskins throw. That was not a good throw at all, uh, but that throw to home plate was the worst. I mean, really, it was just so offline. It was to JT's right. Uh, awful. I mean, like, where was that throw? Good take a look at uh, Zach Wheeler. Start six innings, four hits, three runs already. One of them were earned. Three walks and seven strikeouts. ERA now sits at 3-1-6. You know what? I in no way blame the loss of him. I mean, how could you? How could you? I mean, he was, you know, very, you know, decent last night. He kept us in the ball game. He tried. He really, really tried. He worked his way out of some jams. Uh, he was able to execute his pitches pretty well. I really like the curveball and two strikes. I mean, that curveball looked pretty good last night. Uh, so the fastball continues to veal. It continues to climb up and up. Um, and uh, this is a guy that definitely had a rough spring training. Right? The lockout really hurt him. Um, and, uh, yeah, he threw a lot of innings last year, and he has really, really started to settle. Him and his buddy, Aaron Nola, his counterpart, really have looked good over the past, you know, three, four starts at least. Uh, so hopefully this continues to be a trend. Uh, this really starting pitching has, you know, been pretty good so far this year. I mean, it's been no secret. So another seven strikeouts last night for Philly starting pitching. Uh, so that's one bright spot you can take out of last night's ball game. Uh, Zach Wheeler. Uh, this defense certainly didn't help him, right? <clears throat> Reese Hoskins going to Margo. <laughs> and uh, Brad Hand, two-thirds innings, one hit. Uh, pretty decent. Right now climbs down to one three eight. I mean, this is a guy that's been great. A nice, solid lefty coming out of that Phillies bullpen. Early least familiar third inning. He was able to get the job done. And Trandy Dominguez with a great bottom of the eighth inning uh, and collecting a strikeout. And Corey Knebel with his third blown save of the season already. Gets back with a loss. Now 1-4 on the year. An inning in the third. Two hits. Two runs. Two are earned. Uh, one walk and two strikeouts. Disgraceful. Unacceptable. Any words you want to use. He right now climbs to three one six. Uh, so I think you got to rethink who's going to be a closer. One of the things about this Philly team is we really have two closers on our roster. I mean, uh, you know, arguably you can make the argument maybe maybe even three with Sir Anthony, but, I mean, you have Brad Hand, who's a lefty, and Corey Gennable, who's a righty, and you can execute that so well. And that's when, when we signed both of these guys, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought when it was kind of going to be like a right-handed order coming up uh, in, the, in the ninth, I thought maybe we'd go to Corey Gennable if it was going to be heavily left-handed, you know, you know, order coming up in the ninth inning, I thought we were going to go to Brad Hand. That's what I kind of thought it was going to be. One thing is you got to mix something up. I mean, clearly Corey Gennable, right now in the closer spot, is not working. I mean, uh, it really, really bothers me. And you could take a look at what he did with the Dodgers last year. He was not in the closer's role. Uh, so that's one thing you got to really bring up. Uh, he was not a closer last year for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I really like Corgan Abel a lot, but just, I don't think I kind of like him as a closer. And I mean, being a setup man and being closer, you know, two totally different animals. You could take a look at Hector Neris. Look how dominant he is uh, as a setup man compared to a closer. I mean, you're seeing that right now with the Houston Astros. I understand he's cooled off a little bit, but, um, you know, two totally different animals. This Phillies team is a disgrace. The Phillies find themselves ten and a half games back from the first piece by the analyst. The farthest they've been back at this point since 2017. 2017. Team. We didn't even collect 70 wins that year, ladies and gentlemen. We collected 66 wins in 2017. I just, I think Girardi's probably going to get fired. And honestly, I, I do think maybe someone has to kind of get the brunt of it. But it's not all Joe Girardi. It is not all Joe Girardi. This goes way far beyond Joe Girardi. I think you got a lot of this famous to go and date Gombraski. I could have come on here screaming. This is still a rage video, but I could have went on here screaming and screaming. I just like, I just don't know what to say anymore. I just, they, they just speak for themselves. They're the Phillies. End of story. So San Francisco Giants today, 4 fight the first pitch, uh, Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day. I'll talk about this more in the recap this, uh, this evening uh, as we do open up this three-game set against uh, San Fran. And then uh, Mike Trout and Rendon and Shohei come to town, right? That's going to be a fun series. Uh, Webb on the mound for San Fran. 7-1 with a 3-5-4 ERA. Going against Kyle Gibson, 3-2 with a 3-9-4 ERA. So 4 fight the first pitch, uh, Memorial Day start. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you later. Let's go, Phil. This Philly's team is an embarrassment. I'll see you.